can you use multiple condenser microphones for a multi-podcast host setup? Well, that's what we're going to try and find out. Yo, what up, YouTube? And uh, thank you so much for being here, joining me, checking this video out. I certainly appreciate it, and I do hope that you find this helpful in some way. Uh, so just... To get this out of the way up front, this is not going to be the most technical analysis under the sun of microphones. This is not going to be a microphone review um, in any sense. There are smarter people, um, better people for that on YouTube. This is just going to simply be trying to uh, let you see if it's worthwhile to use condenser microphones when you have multiple hosts or a host and a guest, whatever it happens to be maybe in a close space. Um, you know, obviously when you try to search for stuff like this and the general consensus is you want to use a dynamic microphone. Um, they, you know, would assume that that's a better setup, but for a myriad of reasons, you know, you are obviously here considering using condensers. So, um, you know, shame on you for not going with consensus. Uh, yet here we are, right? And I'm making this video because that's what I'm thinking of doing. And I'll explain, you know, what I think are some of the benefits and some of the some of the negatives for both condensers and uh, dynamic broadcast microphones um, as we get into the sort of uh, review, if you want to call it that, or sort of the uh, testing both set setups, you know, but traditionally, right, when they talk about um, what kind of microphones you should use, especially just podcasting in general. You know, you're going to get the Shure SM7B type dynamics on the high end, maybe something like a Rode pod mic on the low end. Um, and just as a free tidbit of information, you don't really need to go above a Shure SM7B. Uh, if it's good enough for Joe Rogan and Michael Jackson, it's good enough for your podcast, right? Anybody that needs to spend more on a microphone Listen, you probably have too much money, buy an SM7B and donate to charity. But uh, anyways, just to get that out of the way, um, the microphones that we're going to be testing here. So right now I'm talking into a Yeti X um, just because it's simple and it's right in front of me. But for the condenser piece here, um, we're going to be testing the King, the Neat King B2 um, and the 512 audio skylight um, obviously not the same microphone but I think in this test it's not going to make a difference the idea is just going to be what does it sound like what kind of noises and um, uh, bleed over do you get from a condenser so they're both cardioid condenser microphones and you can see I have the 512 audio skylight back here on my right and we got the king b uh, two, they're already set up back there uh, on my left, and that's what we're going to be using. And this is just sort of the podcast setup that I have. Me and my wife podcast together, and traditionally we use a dynamic microphone. Um, but we're considering the unconsiderable two condenser microphones in a close space. So we just want to test it out and hope that you find this helpful as well. Uh, so that's what we're going to use for the condenser mics for the dynamic broadcast or kind of the control group. I have two um, Personas PD-70s. This is what I've been using for about two years now. They're reasonably priced, fairly uh, acceptable dynamic broadcast microphones. So Throughout this video, and even now into the Yeti X, I'm not going to add any sort of post-processing. Uh, it's just going to be the raw sound coming from the microphone. And uh, you guys feel free to let me know in the comments which one you think sounds best. Um, I guess that would help me in my own search for what mics to use. Uh, but that's going to be just it, right? Just very simple. Uh, we'll check out the microphones, get back there, start talking, let you see what the um, what is looking like in the DAW, how the waveforms and what sort of audio it's picking up. And then we'll just discuss the results when we're done. So, all right, I talk long enough. Let's get over to testing the microphones. All right, so we have the microphones installed now. 
Uh, you can see I'm sitting here uh, with the King B2. And uh, on the opposite side there, you can see that the 512 audio skylight is installed. Um, so this is what it sounds like. And again, this isn't a microphone review necessarily. Um, this is just so that you can see using two condensers in the same room. Um, and you guys can see on the screen right now, I'm recording uh, my Reaper uh, DAW with the mics going in. You can see they're peaking around 12 decibels when I'm talking into the King B. And uh, again, you know, we're sitting about, you know, an arm's length away, arm and a quarter's length away. So two and a half feet, maybe three feet, I'm not sure. Not terribly far. Um, and this is what it sounds like. Let's move over to the 512 Audio Skylight. All right, so now we're sitting here at the 512 Audio Skylight. Um, everything's the same. You know, we're about two fists away from the microphone, same as we were with the King B. You can see about the same distance, you know, two and a half, three feet. And this is what it sounds like. And I guess if you guys care at all, you can go ahead and let me know in the comments which one you think sounds better. I haven't processed these at all. It's just me talking into the microphone. But I did want to highlight again why I think there are benefits to condenser microphones. You know, uh, one of the biggest benefits is that you don't have to be right on top of the microphone um, when you're talking. You know, a dynamic, you do. You kind of have to have it pretty close to your mouth. And that's great. And they sound great. But what happens for us and what has led me down this path, you know, with a dynamic microphone, you kind of need to have some good mic discipline. And if you have good mic discipline, you're good. However, my wonderful and lovely wife that I podcast with, she tends to talk a lot like this. And she does a lot of this stuff when she's talking, you know, and these sorts of things, which can make the audio not as great, right? Whereas a condenser, and hopefully this showcase that you can sort of be a little bit further away and it's not going to make quite as much of a difference. You can be a little bit off access and it's not going to make quite as much of a difference when you're moving around. Whereas a dynamic and we'll showcase that when we get the dynamics installed. If you're not really talking directly into the middle of that capsule, you're losing a lot. And especially when you get off access, the coloration of the mic definitely is noticeable. So that's a benefit to the skylight. So we've seen these and uh, let's go ahead and throw the dynamic mics in and see if there's a difference. All right, so now we got the uh, dynamic broadcast microphones hooked up, the Personas PD70s, and this is what it sounds like. So we're sitting now about four fingers away. So as the condenser mics, we were about two fifths away. So about, what is that, you know, six inches as opposed to three inches you want to call it that um, and this is what it sounds like and you can see on the screen now what the sort of uh, what Reaper's picking up both of them you know still set to about negative 12 decibels you know I'm not some audiophile and I didn't spend a whole lot of time so it's relatively close again this isn't scientific um, but this is what it sounds like so uh, you can see also on the screen what the other mic is picking up does it seem like it's more to you? Does it seem like it's less? Um, once we get done with these tests, we'll jump back there and take a look for ourselves. But let's jump over to the other microphone just to say we did the test, right? All right, so now we're on the uh, right microphone here, still the Personas PD70. Um, no processing of any kind or anything like that. Um, still sitting around four fingers away and this is what it sounds like. Again, trying to get about negative 12 decibels. Um, you can see what the other microphone is picking up as well from this audio. And it just, you know, again, why you would pick maybe a dynamic as opposed to a, uh, a condenser. You know, like I said, if you have good mic discipline, um, you know, you can get right up on top of the microphone and it can give you that um, proximity effect a little bit better. Not that condenser microphones can't they can um, but dynamics are more known for that if you will um, but then again it supposedly rejects room noise and that that sort of stuff better than a condenser mic you know so multiple podcasters and I'm just looking at two here 
you know, if you've got four, six podcasters, whatever happens to be, and maybe you're at a tighter, smaller table, things are certainly going to change, right? Um, and that's where something like a dynamic with its off access rejection is going to come in a little bit better, you know, but again, with that negative, um, these do add negatives, one of those being so I'm running, and I should have mentioned this, this earlier, all these mics I'm running into my Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 third gen. Um, but with a dynamic microphone, they generally um, require more gain to get the certain level of volume out of them. So you can either crank the gain up on your audio interface and the 2i2 will give me enough gain to make this, you know, passable. But the problem with that, you can also introduce noise. The more gain you crank up on your interface, you could potentially add in uh, noise to your recording. So to alleviate that, you can see here, I have a little FET head connected in here that boosts it, you know, 30 dB, whatever it happens to be. I'm not exactly sure, but it, it boosts it. So you don't have to crank your audio interface gain. It can get give you that 30 decibel of clean gain but now you're adding in extra cost. You may not like the way it looks. I don't necessarily having this long piece here. You can get a cloud lifter, but those are more expensive. So now you're adding in more cost. Um, so that's a negative. And then again, if you aren't very disciplined on the mic and you start talking and you're doing one of these things and you're moving around, I mean, you can just see, I'll show you on the screen what the audio interface is picking up, right? It makes it a lot more difficult. And then you get back here, um, you not only lose the volume quickly as you get away from a dynamic, but when you get off access of it, you also lose the the tone, right? It goes away pretty quickly. So there are pros and cons to both. And uh, I hope this was enough of a uh, review there for you to kind of get a sense. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the uh, what Reaper showing us and uh, we'll make a decision here at the end. All right, well, I hope that you guys found that useful or helpful in some way, in any way. Uh, obviously, if you have questions after the, fact, uh, after the fact here, please let me know. If it's about the 512 Audio Skylight, um, I'm going to be sending that one back at least <laughs> because there is something rattling loose in there. So, you know, maybe if you didn't like the sound, maybe they have an excuse, right? Um, they have poor QA and the microphone itself is fine. I don't know, but it does rattle. So I'm at least going to be sending that one back and testing out something different. But what do we make of it? You guys saw, you know, the setup that we have back there. The room is um, moderately treated, you know, for uh, the acoustics in here. Nothing outlandish, but it, it does have some treatment in the room. Um, so can you use multiple condenser microphones? I would say, yeah, I mean, obviously you can do whatever you'd like, but should you? And I would say, sure, with some caveats. Um, you know, it did obviously, uh, it picked up more um, of the bleed over from the other mics, you know, the uh, sort of off, uh, the off microphone did have, you know, higher, uh, you know, bleed over from the whatever mic you were talking to, but that's easily correctable in post. Um, so I think whereas with a dynamic broadcast microphone, you need to have good mic discipline as far as how you are speaking into the mic, you know, your placement to the mic, that's very important. I think something to consider if you want to go the route of using two condenser microphones is having good, um, good discipline as far as who's talking and when, because if you're going to have to clean this up in post, it's a whole lot easier when there's like well-defined areas where one host is speaking and then the next host is speaking. If you're constantly bickering and arguing and discussing things over each other, that could be a little bit trickier to clean up in post. Um, but if you're both just kind of going through your, you know, your own sections of dialogue, I think it's very simple to fix in post. Um, just add a little bit of gain reduction, whatever it happens to be. I don't think it would be a problem. Um, so can you do it? Yeah. Should you do it? I think in the right settings. And again, if you're in a podcast setup like we have here, right, about two and a half to three feet apart, it's just two of us, you know, that would change if you were, say, 
four to six podcasters sitting around a small table. In that situation, maybe this isn't a good idea for you. The cleanup after the fact may just be a bit more than you want to bite off. Um, And then, you know, something else you could do to kind of help alleviate that bleed over, obviously just the same as with the dynamic, maybe get that condenser microphone a little bit closer to your mouth and turn the gain down a little bit. So it's not going to pick up quite as much of that off access bleed over. I think those are all things you can do that would make it acceptable. So again, if you guys have questions, please let me know. Um, And again, please let me know what do you think sounded best? Was it the PD-70s, the dynamic microphone? Was it the King B2? Was it the 512 audio or was it the simple old blue Yeti X right here? The old trusty, right? Um, I'd love to know what you guys think about that. And if you have any questions in regards to this, again, I'm by no means an expert, um, but I'll do my best to respond to you and at least let you know what I think. So I do hope you found this helpful. If so, maybe consider a a simple like and a sub, you know, not going to twist your arm, but I will ask you kindly. Otherwise, that's all I got. God bless.